yeah, sorry about that. It was um took me a couple of minutes because there was a there's a coffee pot on the loose, like sending coffee all over the floor. And I oh, was great. like, uh, yeah. So I uh, I played janitor for a while and then uh, and then came back. <laughs> so anyway. <laughs> Podcast. I'm here with uh, Jason Fry. Uh, Jason, what is your uh, role in the uh, in, in the Manage IQ world? Um, my role on Manage IQ is I'm one of the lead engineers on uh, the Manage IQ project. Um, I've actually been working on it since almost the beginning, since 2007. Um, 2007. So I got a lot of experience on it. Yeah. Well, that's a long time to be working on a single product. Yeah. I mean, it's a, it's an enormous product, and there's a lot of facets of it, so it's it's it never gets boring. <laughs> What uh, what could it do like back in 2007? What was the uh, what was the uh, like what, what was the focus back then? Because it couldn't have been about hybrid clouds. I mean, it had to be about you know. So back then we were more focused on it was very VMware specific. We didn't have any Amazon or any of that stuff yet, and um, but it had a lot of this original capabilities were um, fleecing and then reporting on that. Um, so a lot of that was still there um, was was there at that time. Um, okay. And it wasn't until later that we started adding in Cap and U and um, some better eventing and things like that. Okay. Um, but policy was there, um, reporting and fleecing and, and all the inventory analysis. Yeah. Every everyone loves fleecing. Uh, it's a, <laughs> it's it's kind of one of the signature features, isn't it? I mean, that's it's like. One of the it's cool pretty things. unique. Um, what is funny. it exactly? To describe that for the, the idiots like me. Sure. Um, what we can do is we can analyze the raw bits of a of a virtual machine. So we can take the raw VMDK file. So it doesn't have to be running. We don't talk to an API. Uh, we read the raw bits uh, and we have plain Ruby code that goes through and drills through the um, through the file system layer, or it actually it starts even higher than that. We can go through the, uh, the boot record and things like that and go all the way oh, down, wow. deep okay. into the level and down to the file system, into the operating system. And then um, we can actually go even deeper. So on Windows, we can read the registry uh, so we can pull out specific registry keys on uh, Linux systems. We can read uh, into the RPM Berkeley database and pull out information about that. Cool. Um, and you can structure profiles when you're scanning to say, I want to look for specific files. So a customer can say, all of my systems have to have XYZ file in this location. And we can look for that and find it. Cool. So it's all in the name of kind of auto-populating, auto-discovery for like when you mm -hmm. want to deploy and make it easier yeah. for people. So when you install, you, it does it goes it does through the it does the fleecing, and then you have like all the stuff that just sort of appears. In yeah, the, and then you dashboard. continually fleece on an ongoing basis, so you can keep your keep your policies up to date and keep compliance checks up to date and things like that. Um, the other, it's really useful for security. I find um, people want to know what what's on a system before I even start it. You know, I have yep. a template I got from somewhere, but I don't know what's on it. Let me scan it, see what's on it. I don't have to start it. I don't have to make my systems vulnerable. I can just look and then make a decision. Speaking of security, there's there's a bit of a security uh, brouhaha recently with with shell shock, and I was happy to see yeah. that uh, it, it is just this type of policing that lets you uh, avoid the whole shell shock vulnerability. Yeah, the same thing happened when we had Heartfleet, and to us it was like a non-event. It was like, oh yeah, just set up a fleecing policy to go look for open SSL version whatever, and if it doesn't have it, set up an event that you can't start the VM. Done. Excellent. You know, do the same thing with Shellshock and probably any future vulnerability, especially if it's based on like a package version combination, and it's like really easy to find. Nice, nice. What if it's not a package version? Is there any way to still uh, drill down and find out which uh, uh, which which version it has? Um, we do do some introspection on, for example, on Windows. Um, if you know a particular executable um, version is wrong, but there's no, you can't get it from anywhere. You can't get it from the registry, for example. We can actually right. read the, the headers off of um, executables. So we can still get the ah, version okay. right out of the right. executable itself. Um, and if needed, we could probably do something where we pull back, say, an XML file and parse it or in automate or something like that. So cool. usually there's always a way to get the information. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now there's a bit of a controversy in the Manage IQ Cloud Forms world about using the terms fleecing versus smart state analysis. What's your, I don't know, where, where do you fall on that, uh, on that great debate that... Uh... Well, the funny part is none of the code actually says fleecing anywhere. Oh, um, it doesn't? 
No, there's no like <laughs> that RV or anything. But we just all really like that name. And uh, of course, marketing, you know, when you're trying to sell a product, especially when we were like a private company, uh, you know, they want something a little bit fancier. Ooh, so they go with smart ooh, marketing. And we just marketing know. always ruins the party. Come <laughs> it's on, it's a marketing man. thing. <laughs> leasing is where it's at. I, I, I'm, I'm down with leasing. It's all about the leasing. In fact, come to Design Summit, you'll you'll see these T-shirts that uh, they go big with leasing. So I'm. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw. I saw <laughs> awesome. Uh, so, so what are you working on right now? What, what's kind of what's the new stuff that's going to be uh, going into the next version? Uh, what do you guys well, want to do right a, now? There's a lot coming in the new version, and um, I can't even speak to all the parts because there's just so much going on. But um, my kind of general role has been more focused on architecture um, at a high level. Um, so I'm trying to look at ways to um, actually to enable the community. Now that we're an open source project, you, you know, when we were private, it didn't matter that we're like eight or nine developers and, you know, we knew where everything was and we need a new feature. Oh, we'll get that in. Now that we're a much bigger group and we're moving, we've moved everything open source, um, we need to find ways to enable the community to contribute better. Um, right. So one of the big things that I'll probably be talking with uh, Greg Blumquist uh, is uh, what we're calling pluggable providers. So right nice. now, if you, our providers are kind of really baked into the system. Um, they're, they're baked in the Rails layer, and it's really hard to, if I wanted to explain to somebody how do I add a new provider, it's like a 20-page document. It, it's <laughs> really difficult to just go, oh, you have to add a piece here, and add a piece here, and add a piece here. It's, it's, it's tough. So right. what we're trying to do is come up with a, um, at least at the beginning, come up with a way to organize it a little better, and then hopefully right. eventually a nice API that's, that they can plug into and enable all the community members out there to start adding more providers to the system. Because um, that seems okay. to be one of the biggest uh, asks, at least from the community, is like, well, how do I get sure, Google? Sure. How do I get this? Yep. Uh, so that's a big one. Uh, the other... I'm looking into architecture in general, so it's not only just providers, but um, there's different types of providers too. There's not just vert and cloud. There's you got PaaS providers now, and you got oh, I got this network provider, or I got storage right. provider. So, yep. well, figuring out how to get people to get those into the system as well, and I think all of it's going to require kind of a large design change um, that we're trying to sort out right now. L large design change. So, so it'll be done next week. Is that the one? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. That's, how we, that's how we roll. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, so I'd imagine like the next version will have at least some part of the uh, you know pluggable provider architecture in place, and then there'll be kind of a mm -hmm. rollout over time. All right. Yep. Definitely. Um, okay. Yeah, and it's not gonna, it's you know it's we can't do everything at once, so we're gonna say okay, if you want inventory first, maybe we can get inventory pluggable, and then we'll worry about events, and then cap and you, and then whatever comes next. No, no. Could, could you? So that that's another term that flew by me the first time. Cap into you. What what is that? Sure, it's a uh, capacity capacity and utilization. Um, it's uh, metric okay. collection. So we look okay. at uh, you know the CPU, memory, and all that stuff, VMs, how much storage they're using, and then we from the provider we request we we request that information, and then over time we can um, graph it and show things like trending and when you're going to run out of space or you know. Do I need to add another host or something like that? So, it, so it can do like a lot of its own monitoring functions. Mm -hmm. Or it can plug into other monitoring uh, platforms, or or both. We, we've talked about other monitoring platforms. We don't have that yet. Um, okay. Although, through or, technically through Automate, you can connect to just about any system. So somebody could set that up, and they'd have to have a storage mechanism and um, somehow hook it in. Uh, we've talked about over uh, eventually hooking into other. Uh, like Nagios has been brought up a lot, and yep. uh, other systems that we can hook into and get in, get the metrics in, so they can put it all together and make decisions. Cool. So you've been at the uh, in the center of the maelstrom of Manage IQ and now Cloud Forms for many years. But mm -hmm. what was it like going through the process of going from you know private uh, proprietary product that you know your team controlled directly to being this you know brave new open source world where you know, you still, you know, you're still writing the code, but it's a bit different, I guess, dynamic. I think the biggest thing that has changed for us is like the communication mediums. So yeah. we're just so used to just being in an office and talking to each other. And we did have remote employees, but we could jump on a phone and just have a quick session and hash it out. Yeah. Now it's yeah. it's like um, you have IRC, uh, so we have an IRC channel, uh, pound sign manage IQ. 
And we talk a lot on there, but then we also talk on uh, our, our website. We've talked at manageiq.org, which is sort of like yep. a forum. Um, and we try to, we've been trying to like uh, put things out there so that the community can respond and give us more feedback and kind of open it up to a wider audience, especially on design and things like that. Yep. Um, so that, I think that's been the biggest change for us is, is not just having the communication, but remembering to, add, to go out there <laughs> and, and put ourselves out there um, to, to get the feedback and the, and the input. Yeah, no, I, I got to say, you guys have been a joy to work with. It's been, uh, uh, you guys have been really enthusiastic about the project, sort of embracing the, the whole idea of communication. It's been, uh, it's been really, really nice to, to watch that unfold. So yeah. I, uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing what you guys are going to do uh, in the future. And as a reminder, you're going to be at the Design Summit on October 7th and 8th. You're going to be yeah, be talking about all the new things, all the new hotness. If you So that's uh, anything in particular you're going to be talking about there that you haven't already addressed? No, I'll be I'll be continuing on with the architecture. I'll probably be focusing on provider plugins with Greg B. And then uh, Oleg and I are going to have a talk about I think general architecture. Perfect. Uh, so I'll be at least two talks, maybe more. All right. Awesome. <laughs> well, <laughs> awesome. Well, great uh, great talking to you. Uh, once again, you can find uh, Jason Fry and other smart people at the uh, Manage IQ Design Summit coming up October seventh and eighth. You can find a registration link off of manageiq.org. And uh, we'll be talking to you next time. Thanks a lot, Jason. See you there. All righty.